Let's continue our series about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In the previous two videos, we have talked about the platelet and its structure. Today, let's talk about the arachidonic acid, one of the most important pro-inflammatory substances in your body. So, let's get started. First, let me just clarify one thing. I've told you before that the first cell here is the multipotent stem cell. Uh, I don't think this is exactly correct. It's the pluripotent stem cell that starts everything. After the pluripotent, yes, comes the multipotent, but Guyton says pluripotent stem cell is the mother cell here, so let's go with Guyton. So, where is the platelet? It's a myeloid of myeloid origin. We have the megakaryoblast pro-megakaryocyte, then the megakaryocyte. The glorious megakaryocyte will give us platelets. Platelets are not cells, they are just pieces of the magnificent megakaryocyte. And here are the previous two videos, so make sure to subscribe. And save the playlist. The playlist is called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders. Arachidonic acid, where does it come from? From the cell membrane specifically from the lipid bilayer plasma membrane. As you know, the lipid bilayer plasma membrane or cell membrane is composed of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Lipids such as phospholipids, cholesterol, and other lipids such as the sphingolipids, especially in nerve cells. The phospholipids form the arachidonic acid. So the arachidonic acid comes from the phospholipid, which are part of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is made of proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. The lipids phospholipids and cholesterol and others. Each phospholipids has a head and two tails. Head is probably phosphate and the tail is free fatty acids. Not exactly that, but I just want to make it simple. The phosphates are negatively charged. We call this the amphipathic, like the amphibian, because they have one face pointing to the outside world, which is water, and one face pointing to the inside, which is lipid. The arachidonic acid, which comes from the phospholipids of the lipid bilayer plasma membrane, is a polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acid. Chemically, it's carboxylic acid, which means it has 20 carbons present in the phospholipid portion of the lipid bilayer plasma membrane. Yes, indeed. It's very important inflammatory mediator, and it mediates lots of stuff such as vasodilation, also vasoconstriction. So let's add it here and vasoconstriction. But beware, in inflammation, you need vasodilation, but in blood coagulation, you need vasoconstriction. So the arachidonic acid is captured in the phospholipid. Who does free the arachidonic acid from the phospholipid? Is the great enzyme phospholipase A2. It's inhibited by steroids, so steroids inhibit phospholipase A2. In other words, steroids inhibit the formation of arachidonic acid. Since arachidonic acid is inflammatory, steroids are the ultimate anti inflammatory. Makes perfect sense. Arachidonic acid is not an essential fatty acid, except when linoleic acid is deficient. What does essential fatty acid mean? Essential fatty acid means that you have to eat it in the diet because your body doesn't make it. So, arachidonic acid is not that. However, when linoleic acid, the father of arachidonic acid, is deficient, arachidonic acid becomes an essential fatty acid. So, we call arachidonic acid conditionally essential or semi-essential fatty acid. Because normally, you don't have to have it in the diet, but under certain situation, you have to eat it in the diet. Conditionally essential. By using the great Aristotelian method, two premises and a conclusion. One, arachidonic acid is pro-inflammatory. Two, steroids prevent arachidonic acid formation. Therefore, steroids are anti-inflammatory. Bahahaha. So logical. So here are the membrane phospholipids, which are part of the lipid bilayer plasma membrane. Phospholipase A2 will free the arachidonic acid from the membrane phospholipids. Now we have arachidonic acids, then we have two pathways, the prostaglandins pathway and the leukotrienes pathway. The enzyme that lets the arachidonic acid be converted into prostaglandins is the cyclooxygenase. 
The enzyme that makes the arachidonic acid go this way is the lipooxygenase. Some authors say 5 lipooxygenase. I couldn't care less. Let the phospholipase A2 enzyme speak about himself. Dear, you have the microphone. I set the arachidonic acid free from the tyranny of phospholipids. I let arachidonic acid loose to promote my agenda, i.e. inflammation. However, steroids can send me to the cleaners. Membrane phospholipids through the great enzyme phospholipase A2 set the arachidonic acid free. By the cyclooxygenase enzyme, give us the prostaglandin. By the lipooxygenase enzyme, give us the leukotrienes. Let's go to the prostaglandins. It depends on the tissue type. If you are in the platelets, let's form thromboxane A2. Thromboxane A2 is pro-coagulation. However, if you are in the endothelium, let's form prostaglandin I2, also known as prostacycline. Prostacycline is anticoagulation. Believe it or not, both the thromboxane A2 and the prostacycline have the same root. Both the pro-coagulatory and the anti-coagulatory mediators come from the same root, which an in, is an ingenious method. Why? Let's say you need more coagulation. Convert all of your arachidonic acid into thromboxane A2 and at the same time decrease the conversion of arachidonic acid in the prostacycline. Okay, you are in the endothelium. Everything is nice and smooth and rosy. Let's be anticoagulation. Let's convert all of the arachidonic acid to the prostacycline and inhibit the formation of thromboxane A2 by the same token. It's really genius. It's like water pipes. You have a pipe and it has two branches to house number A and house number B. This guy's using the shower, convert all of the water here and decrease it from here. This guy's using the shower, go to hell and let's get the water to this guy. But nowadays, since they can both have the, their shower at the same time, we invented new stuff such as water pumps. But in your body, since procoagulation and anticoagulation should not be happening simultaneously, it's a very good method to have platelet thromboxane and the endothelium prostacycline coming from the same route. That's how you regulate them and focus on one thing at a time. Let's make it more complicated. Membrane phospholipid to arachidonic acid thanks to the glorious phospholipase A2. Where does the arachidonic acid come from? From the linoleic acid. That's why arachidonic acid by itself is not an essential fatty acid. It comes from the linoleic acid. Your body can synthesize linoleic acid and then convert the linoleic acid into arachidonic acid. But when you are deficient of the linoleic acid, arachidonic acid becomes essential. Okay, let's go to the prostaglandin. Cyclooxygenase, prostaglandin. Specifically, prostaglandin G2. How about the lipooxygenase? Leukotrienes, and we have different types of leukotrienes. Leukotriene B, 4C, 4D, 4E4. Whoever invented these names were in like first, like kindergarten or something. Come on, scientists, you can do better. Prostaglandin G2. Is converted into prostaglandin H2, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Then, after prostaglandin H2, depends on the tissue. If you are in the platelets and you need coagulation, let's synthesize the thromboxane A2 through the thromboxane synthase. If you are in the endothelium and you need blood flowing smoothly, let's have the prostacycline through the prostacycline synthase. Thromboxane, it's called thromboxane, so it promotes thrombosis, but it has many functions. First, vasoconstriction. Why? Because when you're losing blood and bleeding and you want to coagulate, first thing to do is vasoconstrict the vessel to decrease the surface area, to decrease the surface area from which the blood is lost. Makes perfect sense. It promotes platelet aggregation to start the thrombus, and it's also a bronchoconstrictor. Let's go to the prostacycline in the endothelium. The endothelium is smooth and nice and acting in its self-interest, which is to leave the blood flowing in a nice laminar flow. So prostacycline will keep the blood cycling, flowing smoothly. Prostacycline will promote vasodilation and it will inhibit platelet aggregation. It's the exact opposite to thromboxane A2. Let's go to the leukotrienes. Leukotriene B4 is a chemotaxis agent. 
chemo, which means chemical, and taxi. So it will recruit the neutrophil through some chemicals. Then how about the leukotriene C4, D4, and E4? They are bronchoconstrictors. They make the life of an asthmatic patient hell. Let's make it even more complicated. We start with the membrane phospholipid. Thanks to phospholipase E2, we have the arachidonic acid, which comes also from the linoleic acid. Through that cyclooxygenase enzyme, we have the prostaglandin G2. After G comes H2. H2 can give us prostaglandin D2 and prostaglandin E2. Prostaglandin E promotes fever, promotes pain, which is ew, it hurts. And prostaglandin F2 alpha. Then the prostaglandin H2, depending on the tissue, will give us thromboxane thromboxane A2 and prostacycline. Thromboxane A2 has three functions. Number one, it's a vasoconstrictor. Number two, it increases platelet aggregation. Number three, it's a bronchoconstrictor. How about the prostacycline? It keeps the blood cycling. So, it's vasodilator. It's also decreasing the platelet aggregation. Let's make it more complicated by adding some drugs. Pharmacology, baby. Membrane phospholipid. By the enzyme phospholipase A2, we have the arachidonic acid. Who inhibits the phospholipase A2? Steroids. That's why steroids are the best anti-inflammatory ever invented, ever known to mankind, because they inhibit the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes, and all of these are inflammatory mediators. Thank you, steroids. That's why when your doctor is stupid and he doesn't know how to treat you, probably he will give you steroids and probably you'll be fine because there is a very good chance one of those crazy guys is involved in your disease. So what inhibits the phospholipase A2 is the steroid. What promotes and activates the phospholipase A2? Tissue injury. Yes, because it's pro-inflammatory. Tissue injury means we need an inflammation to fight all of the bad stuff that's happening, including the bacteria. Thrombin. Yeah, baby. Thromboxane. We need thrombosis through thrombin. Makes perfect sense to promote this agenda of coagulation. Bradykinin, because bradykinin also stimulates pain. Angiotensin 2, because in angiotensin 2, let's say you have hypotension or you have sepsis. So we need to vasoconstrict. Epinephrine, sympathetic, fight, flight, fright mechanism. You're bleeding to death. Epinephrine is high, stimulates phospholipase A2. Arachidonic acid is converted into prostaglandin G2, which is converted into prostaglandin H2, converted into thromboxane E2 by the thromboxane synthase. Thromboxane E2 will vasoconstrict and increase platelet aggregation until we form a thrombus and prevent you from bleeding to death. Amazing. Let's go to the leukotrienes. We have the leukotriene B4, chemotaxis, C4, D4, and E4. How to inhibit the leukotrienes? We have a leukotriene inhibitor called xylitone. Xylitone will inhibit this conversion from arachidonic acid into leukotrienes. Okay, let's say that xylitone didn't work or we are not using Xylotone, we have another chance at the receptor level. These leukotrienes will act on the receptor causing bronchoconstriction and making the asthma patient's life worse. So let's block the receptor by recept leukotriene receptor inhibitors such as the great Montlucast. The Monty. Okay, let's go to the cyclooxygenase inhibited by aspirin and non-steroidal. That's why aspirin is a famous antiplatelet drug. It inhibits the thromboxane A2. Okay, how is aspirin antiplatelet? If aspirin will also inhibit the prostacycline, that will keep the blood cycling. We have two theories here. One, yes, in the beginning it inhibits the prostacycline, but just give it time and it will release the inhibition of prostacycline and it will only inhibit thromboxane A2. That's why it's an antiplatelet. There is another theory that aspirin does not inhibit the formation of prostacycline. Somehow the tissue knows how to escape and bypass this crazy nonsense. So aspirin, famous antiplatelet. The difference between aspirin and nonsteroidals is that aspirin is an irreversible platelet inhibitor, while nonsteroidals are reversible. That's very important. So if you are taking aspirin and you're taking aspirin, 
and you take another aspirin and you take another aspirin for a long time, I guarantee you, your platelets are all screwed irreversibly. The only way to stop it is to stop aspirin and give the bone marrow some time to produce extra megakaryocytes and they will produce new platelets that didn't know aspirin and they will function normally. Another thing, aspirin in low dose is antiplatelet. That's why grandpa takes baby aspirin. You might be surprised. Why does grandpa, the old guy, takes baby aspirin? Shouldn't aspirin, like baby aspirin, be for babies? No, aspirin is never for babies. It can cause rise syndrome. We never use aspirin for babies. We only use baby aspirin for grandpa. Baby means small dose because aspirin in low dose is antiplatelet. In high dose, it's analgesic, anti-inflammatory, and antipyretic. Aspirin is just genius. How is aspirin genius? By blocking the cyclooxygenase. What is the most famous side effect of aspirin? Guess what? Bleeding. Now we understand why we use inhaled steroids for asthmatics because steroids inhibit the formation of the arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid is going to be converted into the leukotrienes B4, C4, and D4. C4, D4, and B4 are bad for asthmatics, so steroids will inhibit the arachidonic acid formation. We use leukotriene inhibitors for asthmatic. Yeah, absolutely, they are bronchoconstrictors. Asthmatics need bronchodilation, not bronchoconstriction. Aspirin is antiplatelet. Yeah, it inhibits the cyclooxygenase. So now we don't have prostaglandin, such as the ugly thromboxane A2. Steroids are the most powerful anti-inflammatory ever because they inhibit both the pathways, the cyclooxygenase and the lipooxygenase, by inhibiting the root, which is the arachidonic acid formation by the phospholipase A2 enzyme. Platelets are the only cells in your body that possess the thromboxane synthase, so which makes them the most, the only cell that forms thromboxane. This may not be 100% true, but I like to make things easy. Thromboxane A2, bronchoconstrictor, vasoconstrictor, platelet aggregator. How about the prostacycline, or also known as prostaglandin I2? It's a vasodilator and it inhibits platelet aggregation. Well done! In the next video, we'll talk about thrombocytosis, about grandma who has a high platelet count, and we will learn when to reassure her and send her home, and when to give her medicine. It all depends. We'll see you in the next video. That's why you need to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I have more than 60 notes only for Patreon subscribers. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. And as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. It's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.